HBC Digest, welcome back um, and welcome to our new debut video series, interviews with uh, enlightened and enlightening folks in the HBC community. Today, we are privileged to be joined by Chris Wright. He is a professional basketball player, a former University of Dayton uh, student athlete who actually is, is joining a, a, a wave of, of professional athletes who are becoming invested and interested in historically black colleges. Yesterday, with a significant announcement of his endowed scholarship at Wilberforce University in Ohio, uh, which is going to benefit uh, for a long period of time, uh, athletes, students, faculty, staff, everyone who's involved in Wilberforce and just a, a continuing effort on behalf of that school to reach out in a big way uh, to corporations and individuals looking to support the WU movement. So, brother, it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity and a great uh, honor to have you on today. You are a, a Dayton native. Um, you didn't go to Wilberforce, but talk to us a little bit about what piqued your interest about the institution. Um, I appreciate you having me first off. And, um, you know, just me and my interests, you know, as far as like the whole Wilberforce uh, University and, and the whole HBCU movement, as you as you mentioned in the intro, um, it just kind of piqued my interest because um, for me, understanding like just the history, history of HBCUs and, and trying to figure that out and being a, um, a highly rated player you know, in high school, um, you know, being recruited by some of the top high school, I mean, by some of the top colleges in the country, um, there was really no HBCUs or, or local schools or different schools like that recruiting me. It was like the University of Dayton and, you know, Michigan, Michigan State, different things like that. Um, and now that I'm out of college and I'm a professional athlete now, um, trying to figure out, you know, why didn't those type of schools approach me or why didn't those uh, HBCUs come after me as a player? But it was came down to um, not, the knowledge of knowing and access to those schools and not really having, um, you know, the, the prestigious name like other other um, highly rated, you know, colleges and different things. And, you know, I'm like, well, I went to University of Dayton and I'm here. There's other opportunities as well for kids that's coming, you know, after me. So it's kind of like, you know, why not give, you know, a, a full look of all the schools around here and not pushing one school to the side because it's an HBCU or or whatever. Just understanding like, OK, let's look at this school and let's see what it's about before we just kind of push it to the side. So for me, I want to really um, dive into the history of HBCUs and understanding, you know, what that can mean for a community and, and, and in particular, like a black community seeing you know, schools that was founded by someone that looked like you and I, and how can I help support that? So um, now just really seeing, you know, the whole movement and the wave of HBCUs and, and trying to figure out how I can help and do my part. What does it mean to see that that increased interest from up and coming student athletes? Uh, we see McCormaker coming to Howard. Uh, we see Mikey Williams, who's expressing interest about HBCUs. What what do you think that is happening with young people that you just you just explain what, what the differences were when you were coming up? Mm -hmm. But how do you think that transition has occurred for, for young people today in high school? I mean, I think um, when you look at some of the things LeBron has done for the sport as far as um, using your voice um, and, I, and these kids see that now, especially with social media and everything and these high school kids um, taking control of their careers early because a lot of times um, you listen to the people that's kind of in the business, the ones that say, well, I'm gonna make you this amount of money or I'm gonna do this for you or do that for you as an athlete. Um, now they're able to um, really speak for themselves and, and you know, choose an HBCU to try to change the wave, to change the narrative of that and um, show all kids that, you know, an HBCU is possible, it's a school. Um, and like I said before, not pushing it aside because it's, is historically um, a, a African American school or a black school. That's that shouldn't be the reason why you you know shy away from a school. So um, I think seeing kids like this who are highly rated going to HBCUs, it would allow other kids to see that I can do it too, and not necessarily just black kids. Um, there are probably are some athletes that are are are, are white that would want to go to schools to play with these type of players. So I think. You know them i think it's great um them taking you know their career into their own hands and controlling the narrative right now while they're in high school and, and you know making those decisions and like i said you know um credit lebron on a lot of that stuff when you go back to even him making a decision 
where it's like today I'm going to control the narrative of my career and my life regardless to um, what anybody else is saying. So um, big ups to, you know, the young guys that's that's making the decisions to go to HBCUs and, and even considering them because, you know, in the past, it's only big name schools that you would want to go to. You you've played a lot of different places. You've been in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, you're from Ohio, so it makes sense the connection that you have with Wilberforce. But yeah. what was the what was the engagement like um, with the university that that made it made you feel like yes, I'm I'm bought in. I'm Team WU. Here's where I'm a, I'm going to sit down roots. Um, I, we was on I was on a Zoom call. Um, we was talking about you know the COVID nineteen crisis and everything, and how as leaders of the community, um, you know, we can help. And Dr. Pinker. You know, the president of workforce was uh, on that call and I told my story and, and told, you know, kind of where I came from, how I grew up, you know, having a mother that raised, um, you know, 14 of us as a single parent. Um, she gave birth to five boys, adopted four boys, one girl. And then she also, you know, adopted a few of my cousins. So, um, you know, and when I told my story, he, he was like, hey, we should link up and connect. So we linked up, um, you know, and then I, I had never. I, last time I was on campus, I was probably like maybe fourth, fifth grade, maybe. And I, I can even remember how to get there. Uh, so uh, <laughs> once I got over there, it was like, man, like it was actually, you know, nice campus and everything. So when we sat down and we and we talked um, between the glass and the mask is on, the mask on and everything. <laughs> right. Um, you know, I, I was just telling him, you know, just about my foundation and how, you know, I have uh, different connections to different professionals um in a career field that i feel like could you know assist with maybe some of the programs that's not you know offered here and also um you know with myself and my foundation and friends i could you know offer you know some financial assistance and different things like that and um what made it even what put it kind of over the top as well is one of my old coaches um coach mitchell who's the head basketball coach uh at Warburforce now and just got hired on this year when I saw his name as the coach there, I'm like, oh yeah, this this is the perfect fit. And then, you know, I see a lot of talented kids that come through um, our city and they kind of go away to school or they go to kind of, they go to other colleges, but they end up being back here sometimes for whatever reason. And sometimes being close to home, I don't, I've been able to get the best of both worlds. Like you mentioned, I've traveled, you know, playing professionally, I've traveled outside of the US. So I understand the benefits of of traveling and international travel. I understand the benefits of being home and having roots here. So me being a, a some 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 uh, influence here on our young athletes and allowing them to see that you can control your narrative and you control where you go, I thought it would be good to just um, allow, um, allow them to see and help them understand that sometimes, you know, division one school may not be your best option or division two where you can go to an NAIA school and create your own path because it's help is needed here. You know, you want to go where you're needed and not just want it. You know what I mean? So if you can go here and make an impact and, and change um, the way people view something that you started, why not do that? And um, just having that conversation with them. And I just think it was a good fit for, um, you know, the right way foundation and, and, you know, kids in this area that, you know, that are part of my program, and I just want to see them be successful. And sometimes we chase the brand and we chase the name of of a, um, of highly, you know, highly talented or highly um, like high impact names or chasing the, the, the prestigious schools and different things like that. Well, we can get kind of lost and forgetting our own name and what we bring to the table as young men. And that's what I wanted to be able to to share with them and change. And I felt like Wilberforce would be a a good starting point with that you played for a program in in ud that in recent years it doesn't seem like it's yeah. been that long but they right. just come up they, they were picked to, to win an yeah. national title. they were they were sure. the title. oh man that, that hurt me that hurt me that's hurting me because of the whole COVID <laughs> thing man. it's over hurt you but 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 that but that yeah. is the example of right you know, many people regarded that that's a mid-major program that is really do you yeah. do you think that do you think that with the investment that you're making, um, the interest that you're getting from high caliber athletes coming out of high school, that you could see an HBCU 
coming up the same way? And how long yeah, do you think sure. the process takes? Um, I mean, so if you talk about the whole dating situation, I went there in 2007 and then I was able to have, you know, guys follow me there, you know, from 2007 and you now you look you know, 13, 13 years later, um, a national championship contender. Um, mm -hmm. And some of these kids that's on the team now were hosted by the people that I hosted. So I think a lot of kids, if they understand, if they come together and, and I can think it, especially now, it, it only take, it can be five to six years, I feel, where, you know, some of these teams could be national championship contenders. If you look at the talent that's out there and also you're just creating that wave because you think about, you know, when I was in high school going, looking to go to college, a lot of the kids were in elementary school. So they look up to whoever the local high school players is. They, they watch the NBA, but you know, if you're a local celebrity, as far as on the high school level, these kids are looking up to you. So they're going to follow you or, watch everything you do and want to be where you are so you have opportunity to you know change the, the kids behind you that's five six years behind you and i don't think it'll take long to turn it around what's your opinion of the nba um as a as a pro sports league really becoming involved with hbcu so we've seen them not just the athletes um the individual athletes like you and chris paul um, and LeBron and, and so many guys that are giving to HBCUs, whether we know it or not, um, because a lot of these athletes donate and you never even hear about it. Right. Um, Carmelo is, is another one. I mean, but, but not just individuals, but the league, the Players Association uh, has worked with the SIAC conference to, to create mm -hmm. combines specifically for HBCU players. What do you think about the league and, and, and that body particularly aligning with HBCUs to say, hey, we can we can help this this come up. And then on, on the other end, HBCU is really doing a good job of hiring um, coaches that, that used to be former NBA players. So this is almost yeah. like a coaching pipeline. So there's like a unique synergy between black colleges and the NBA. Yeah. Why do you, what do you think institutionally that means for both the colleges and for the league? I mean, I, I think for the league, I mean, especially it's great for to see the players that has, you know, the most influence, um, you know, pushing the whole HBCU initiative. And like I said, you know, being a, a young black athlete and, um, supporting other young black athletes, it gives the kids that are in situations um, in their neighborhoods to see like, dang, like he looks just like me and I can do those things. You know what I mean? So I think with, uh, like you said, just some of the HBCU uh, schools doing a good job of hiring, you know, black athletes and um, professional athletes is great because I can tell you from experience, I'm not going off, you know, a research book. Like I'm actually telling you my experience on how to get kids or um, what it is that you can uh, put forth to show these kids like this is why I need you here at our school. And this is what um, steps you need to take to be a successful uh, student athlete and then a successful professional player. If that's what you choose to do. So I think it's great though on both sides of it. And, you know, like you said, it, it kind of go unnoticed that you know, sometimes with the guys giving money to the different schools and different things like that. And some of them want it to be that way. Um, but I think it is something that should be, um, you know, praised and talked about because so many people overlook um, HBCUs. And I feel like, again, it shouldn't be put to the side just because um, it was founded by, um, you know, blacks. I don't, I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? I, just, I think it should be, you know, just like any other school um put out there put on the forefront and um you should talk about the school and not just push to the side tell us a little bit more about your foundation um and what specifically your endowed scholarship at wilberforce will do um first i mean like i said just talking about you know growing up you know with in a single parent home and understanding finances is, is sometimes you know limited one you have you know multiple children and things like that so um, you know, offering, of course, financial assistance and, and uh, future scholarships for, you know, kids coming in the world before us or, and like you said before, I want to be able to expand on um, not just, you know, giving, you know, to world before us and uh, Central State is right across the street and, you know, um, other, you know, HBCUs like down in Kentucky and everything, um, but it will allow kids to, to be on campus and I me mean, offering financial assistance to them and other uh, career pathway programs that um, maybe Wilberforce may not offer things such as uh, like sports management, 
uh, sports medicine. Um, I have my own sports medicine clinic. So um, different things like that, uh, e-sports, um, construction management, um, where in the future, if they're not an athlete, they can, um, you know, turn around and have, you know, backgrounds in some of uh, the programs that's being offered. Um, you know, we're still working out a lot of the kinks with the school and, and what exactly we can offer over a longer period of time. But, you know, right now, for sure, knowing that um, we will be offering scholarships to my foundation um, and allowing kids to, to that will want to go there the opportunity to, um, you know, benefit from, you know, financial assistance to go higher in life. And then tell us where we can donate to your foundation, um, how we can specifically support the Wilberforce Endowed uh, Scholarship created by Chris yeah. Wright, and how yeah, we, can, so, we can just do more to support you, brother. Yeah, so uh, the Right Way Foundation, um, you can follow us on Instagram at the Right Way Foundation, um, and then also the Right Way Foundation.org. Um, you can go in there and, and donate and just continue to, you know, help this project, you know, moving along, and, and we're going to make sure we do. Um, the best we can and the right things with um, making sure we find in the perfect candidates for, you know, this positive movement that's happening. Um, you know, and I appreciate, you know, being out here, being able to talk to you. And like I said, on Instagram, the right way foundation, the right way foundation.org on Facebook, um, the right way uh, foundation. Um, and just, you know, just grateful to be able to, you know, talk to you all just about, you know, this movement. Pro basketball player, uh, pride of Dayton, Ohio, Chris Wright. We appreciate your time this morning, brother. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Appreciate you.